They're looking to add some drama, tension, release, dynamics, and excitement to your tracks. You came to the right place. Stick around. Hey guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the channel. So first things first, happy new year. And thank you so much for helping me smash that 10K subscriber goal by the end of 2022. It's 2023, we're off to a rocking start and I appreciate each and every one of you who took the time to subscribe to the channel. So you may or may not know, I do track feedback live streams on the channel roughly about once a month. The opportunity to submit tracks is exclusive to patrons. So if you wanna check out my Patreon, there's a link in the description. But the point is I often receive tracks that feel very linear. Elements come in and come out of the track, but without a lot of dynamics. Another common issue that I hear is elements remaining static and lacking movement in the mix. So what I'm gonna show you today is some simple techniques using automation inside your DAW to create movement and life, add tension and release, and create a really dynamic, pro-sounding track. And make sure you stick around to the end, because I've got a bonus tip that's gonna make everything easier, quicker, and more awesome. As always, if you want to grab the project files to the video, there's a link in the description to Patreon. And let's jump into Ableton and do some automation. All right guys, so here we are inside Ableton and this is a wee project that I've put together to demonstrate how we can use automation to get our tracks to sound a bit more alive, interesting and professional sounding to smooth out some of those transitions and help create some tension and release. So I'll just play you a little quick preview of the track. So cool track, I may have just invented a new genre, I'm calling it Tribal Rave, it's copyrighted, don't copy me. <laughs> I think it sounds cool, but pretty much all of those transitions are very robotic sounding. Things just come in and come out, there's no kind of finesse to it. So let's see how we can do that using automation. The main types of automation that we're going to use are volume automation, filter or frequency automation, could be with a filter or an EQ, effects automation, so modulating parameters on effects like a delay or reverb, bus automation, which simply means automating a group or a bus rather than one individual sound, and then send automation, so automating the amount of send to a return or auxiliary channel. Plus, as I said at the start, keep watching to the end because I've got a special bonus tip for you. All right, so let's demonstrate some volume automation on this string. So the string comes in here. And the point of the string is to create tension as we go into the break and then and as we go through the break to the drop. So what I'm going to do on the string is coming from Omnisphere. If you download the project files, I'll freeze this so you'll have the audio even if you don't have Omnisphere. So what we can do here is select this volume knob. This is just a gain plugin and I've mapped the volume to the gain and just set it to minus 12 and plus 12. The gain goes really high and really low and it can be quite fiddly to automate. So this device is specifically for automation and if you download the project, you can save that to your live devices. It's super handy, it's something that I've just created and I wish I'd done it literally years ago. But anyway, let's get on with this. String automation, boom. We just click here to add an automation point, click here to add another automation point, and then we bring this down. So now when the string comes in, it's gonna be a lot more subtle. As we come up here, it's gonna be a lot more intense. <laughs> So you can hear it being introduced there. Now what we could do is even have it get extra intense just here. I'm just holding Alt so that it doesn't snap to the grid as I move the point. And then if I hold Alt again, it changes the tool so I can get this curve. I just drag it down like that. Nice 
nice smooth transition. Now one more thing that we can automate is some frequency on this percussion. So it's a really cool percussion loop. It's got this nice texture on it, but what if we pull that out? So we can just hear the bongos at the start, right? So I'm bringing that down to 976. I can grab this node here, pull it down. Close enough. Now I just click this one to delete that node and we get that nice straight automation. Give it a bit of a curve. Now when we play it, it's going to be more filtered out here and it's going to come in at this transition point, which is going to act a little bit like an effect sound. More calm. So very subtle, but a lot of little moves like this throughout your track are gonna create real impact. Now, one more volume automation we can make is when this closed hat comes in. Cool, but let's find a volume knob. There'll be volume knob, drag it on. We can also use the gain on the EQ. That's what I used to do. So let's go here, boom. Doesn't have to be a lot. So you can hear now that closed hat is increasing in volume as it goes through, just kind of really smoothing out the transition. So you can imagine when you start applying these techniques to all of your elements or a lot of your elements, things really start kind of creeping in and creeping out and the arrangement can become very dynamic. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is add some filter automation to the full drum bus. I've got this auto filter here. I can turn it on and turn it off and I get an automation lane for that. So if I hit B to get my handy tool, boom. So it's off, and it's on. So if I pull this frequency down, that's what we want. All right, so now we can automate the frequency. We're going to have it come down as we come into the break. Pulling down the energy of the drums, allowing the other elements to come through to the forefront. And you can hear as that's rising up and the frequencies are coming back, it creates this kind of anticipation or energy increase. Now to emphasize this with the drums, I'm gonna use some send automation. I've got a return channel here with a very big reverb. So let's solo the drums. Let's draw in some reverb. I just select the return, grab this node, bring it up. Now I know from experience that this is gonna to be too much. So let's bring it down to about minus 13, minus 12. So I just wanted to emphasize it there, but we want it to be subtle. So this is creating kind of the effect of a white noise sweep and then like a white noise crash, but it's being created by a reverb send from the drums. So it sounds very organic and very natural to the elements of the track. Nice, let's just give it a wee bit more. So now what else? We've got that snare roll that comes in just out of nowhere, right? So let's try and smooth that out a bit using some automation. We can do that directly on this EQ. I'll hit the gain here, get some nodes, bring it down in volume. Now when it comes in, at the end. So what else can we do? Well, we can use the frequencies to control it a bit at the start. I'm going to pull down the frequency of this high cut. Sounds cool. I'm gonna do the same thing on the low cut. Let's go like this, bring it up, and so now it's 
quieter and a bit thinner. Now by creating contrast, it sounds a lot fuller and a lot bigger here. Let's also automate a bit of reverb send. This is another reverb that I have in my template. So now there's another dynamic element in the arrangement. All right, let's have a look at this acid. It's just an audio sample, but I've got an auto filter on it. Now what I want to demonstrate here is recording in automation. Now we can have this, so it's barely audible when it comes in underneath everything else. Very subtle. So what we're going to do is hit the record and I'm going to control this auto filter on my Ableton push. If I select this, you get this blue hand and the controls show up on my Ableton push. You can do the same thing with any MIDI controller that you've got mapped in Ableton Live. I want you want to make sure that this overdub button is engaged. It's going to overwrite the automation without overwriting the clip. So hit record. <laughs> I really enjoy doing that by hand, recording it in like that. The end result feels a lot more natural. You're almost playing the filter like, like an instrument and you can really kind of get in tune with the track and anticipate what, what's going to happen. And you get these really kind of dynamic ebbs and flows in the energy. If you make any moves that you're not quite happy with, you can always like zoom in and edit this. Now make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to show you something really cool on this acid. But for now, let's move on to this vocal my 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 so what we're going to do is use the auto filter to just bring this in a bit more subtly and same with the volume not too much just a wee bit So I always recommend listening along and tweaking this as you go. As you're listening, you can feel when something's out of place and tweak it appropriately. So also in the vocal group, we've got this vocal chop. I've got this delay here, which when I turn it on, cool. It just sounds like a normal delay, but you'll see here I've got the time set to 720 milliseconds. So the project tempo is 125 milliseconds. And the reason this is set to 720 is because at 125 BPM, 720 is a dotted quarter note. So this website's called Nick Fever, and I use this to calculate delay times, reverb times, just to kind of sync things up within my project and get them sounding awesome. I'll show you how to do that now. What we're going to do is hit that and get some automation going on. We'll click here and click here to get some dots, just so we've got that kind of preserved. Now what happens when we move this time, because the delay is set to repitch mode, it's going to pitch the delay taps up and down. Let's have a listen.
So I'll hit this automation button just to set it back to default. And let's just go through and add some automation into this. You can just do it by hand, move it around, maybe have it a bit lower at the start, coming in. Now, if I want to get that back to that 720, I can just copy here, paste, and now it's 720. Cool. Now we're also going to use the feedback. So I've got the feedback turned down, but in order for this to work properly, we kind of need to have a bit more feedback. So we can automate the feedback as well a little bit. We'll just bring it up to something like this. So you can hear in context, this is getting really interesting and cool and textural. So it's subtle in the background there, but really cool. I really like it. To emphasize it and make it stand out a bit from the original source, we can hit the ping pong as well. Very cool, I really like that one. All right, let's go back to the acid line. And what I'm gonna show you is this awesome rack from Basecliff. Basecliff is an EDM producer, DJ. He has a production school, he does mentoring. He's got a podcast, which is where I got this from. If you go to basecliff.com forward slash podcast VIP, enter your name and email, you will be given a free gift which has this plugin that I'm using and a bunch more really, really useful plugins made from Ableton Live racks. This one here is called Easy Washout and it's got one knob, it says Washout. I think it's made with a previous version, but we could go like this and just get the one knob, Washout, and let's automate it. This is what it does, okay? <laughs> So inside the rack is a bunch of effects. I'm not gonna go into what they do. I don't know exactly, but when you turn the knob, it's changing a bunch of parameters in here, adding delay and reverb and all sorts of good stuff. Let's just close that and not worry about it because all we need to do is add in some automation like this. And that is gonna sound sick in the context of our track. Ease it in a bit more and take a listen. So I'm sure you can see how that can be applied to a bunch of different things. You could put that on your drum bus. You could try putting it on your master, get crazy with it. But using stuff like this, little tools, little hacks is invaluable to producing fast and getting amazing results. So let's take a listen through from the start and see how all this automation has been put into play.
awesome. So much more dynamic, exciting, and smooth, and pro sounding. <laughs> If you want to download this project and take a look through, then there's a link in the description to my Patreon where you can do that. You can also grab the project files from a whole bunch of other videos. So just get in there and have a look around. All right, guys, there you go. Easy, huh? Now you've got no excuses but to get your tracks rocking in 2023. If you like this video, but you're looking for more, then check out this playlist. There's a lot of stuff in there that you're going to like. Now, that's it for me today. I'll catch you next time. Peace.